Good morning, Gail. How are you? I am well, Rachel. How are you? I am doing fine. I am so excited that we're going to talk today. Because I think that there are so many folks out there that are probably looking for little projects in their house right now during all this downtime. And I think that you are the perfect person to help motivate and inspire them to get started. Thank you so much. So you are Gail Grimberg of Let's Get Organized. Yes. And you help people get organized. I do. <laughs> I love your business name. It's thank you. It's very easy to know what it is that you do. Thank you. So, would you mind doing a little bit more of an introduction and telling us a little bit more about you and what your passions are, even aside from organize, organizing, you know, what other things do you love to do? Oh, sure. I'd be happy to tell you. So yes, I'm Gail Gruenberg. My company is Let's Get Organized. I'm a professional organizer based in Westwood, New Jersey. I am the chief executive organizer uh, of my company since I started it in December of 2003. Wow. Um, I am a certified professional organizer in chronic disorganization, which means that I specialize in working with people who have brain-based challenges. Not exclusively, we also work with busy professionals who may just need a little bit of a, an extra hand, an extra tweak. Um, so I am passionate about the brain science behind organizing, uh, which is why I decided to specialize in chronic disorganization. And outside of organizing, I, I love to, I'm a real, honestly, I'm a real introvert. So I love to read, I love to listen to a good story. Um, I love to watch movies. And up until this pandemic hit, I was learning how to swing dance. Wow. Yeah. And it's wow. so much fun. <laughs> wow. So have they moved those classes online? Like, are you able to do some of that? I have to check. Okay. Because I'm kind of in withdrawal now after a few weeks. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's actually kind of hard once you start pulling in and, and staying in it, it, you really get kind of comfortable in that place. You are absolutely. I'm finding myself there. And so, yeah, but I, I know I have some friends that have a daughter in some dance classes that they are taking online, which is kind of crazy. And they said it's working out really well because all the girls aren't talking and chitter, chitter chattering. <laughs> That's so, a bonus. Yeah. So it keeps everybody, you know, focused on, on what they're working on. So, yeah. Yeah, and I love that you're interested in the brain science piece of it, because I think that um, what that means for the average person is that you are going to tweak organizational techniques to how their brain works and not necessarily how your brain works. Yes, so that's exactly that's right. That's really an important piece to, to remember. It's not a one-size-fits-all um, tactic, which is what I've found in my business. Like, I, I need to set up an organizational structure for photos for people that um, makes sense for them and not just for me. So you have, you have to be like a chameleon. <laughs> that's right. That's right. And that, that's a special gift, Gail. <laughs> yes, I <have>. You as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so tell me, what are, like, what are some typical projects that you could see people maybe getting started and being able to finish during our current um, stay at home mode? Um, something that you know, that, that, that you can see the completion, right? It doesn't have to be a, a huge, enormous project, but, you know, and maybe that's part of it. Maybe it's breaking down into the smaller pieces. Um, but what are some projects that you could see people working on that, that would make sense right now? You're absolutely right. Um, tackling a, a big project could feel very overwhelming. Um, so breaking it down into smaller pieces is great advice. And I'm thinking that right now, people are probably spending a lot of time in the kitchen. Mm. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> More than I prefer. Yes. I'm not a big cook myself, so it's yep. like, just stay away. Yep. And uh, I can tell you in a moment what my son is doing because he's a culinary person. Oh, lucky you. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. We, we wow. can get to that if you like. Um, but as far as organizing, I figure, you know, people are kind of, we're very focused on making sure that we have enough food in the house and making meals that we're not going to get bored with. Um, so I would suggest, you know, 
maybe if you're going to tackle a kitchen or if one is going to tackle a kitchen, then start with maybe one cabinet at a time. Maybe okay. you start with the pantry um, because a lot of people, they might have a deep pantry and things just get buried back there after a while. Mm -hmm. um, so we don't know what's back there, if it's still fresh. So the technique that I suggest using, um, it's, it's very simple. We'll put some C's to it. <laughs> so what I suggest is um, first consider, look, look at what you have, see what there is and, and familiarize yourself. Then clear it all out. So say you're going to do one shelf, just clear out the whole shelf. Not the whole pantry. Not the whole pantry yet. Okay. That was probably the mistake I made when I did my pantry recently. <laughs> <laughs> I just pulled it all out. And so don't do that? that. Is that what you're saying? You could. If it's not <laughs> overwhelming, you know, I, I personally would prefer to do the whole thing at one time. Did it feel like, oh God, this is too much. I shouldn't have done it that way. Um, well, I mean, it certainly kept me motivated to get it done because I didn't want everything all over the floor on the dining room table. Um, but yeah, not a little that's overwhelming. An excellent sure. point. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good to know. So if that is the case, then I would suggest you know, going shelf by shelf um, and, and just see what you have, clear it out, put it out on the counter or the floor, whatever, wherever you feel comfortable working. Categorize it, which is simply a way of saying put like with like. It's one of the generally accepted principles of organizing that I came right, up with. Right. Yep, I tried to do that. <laughs> yeah. Um, toss whatever is expired, whatever is open, broken, leaking, yuck, uh, dented, and, you know, over, you know, over time. Um, so that's consider, clear, categorize, then contain. So you're going to want to put it back in a way that is easy for you to see what you have and you can use it up. Um, and then another C is over time control. Just maintain it so that you can always see what there is, that it's always fresh, you're constantly rotating. Um, in accounting, there, was, there are the concepts of FIFO and LIFO, first in, first out, or last in, first out. I like first in, first out, keep it fresh, keep it rotating. Um, it, so it's not a, a complicated procedure, it just takes a, a little bit of focus. I think the um, hardest part for me is the control piece. Like, I don't mind getting it organized. I don't mind pulling it all out and cleaning everything up and it looks great. But then it's the control piece that I personally struggle with. Um, in my house, we joke about the pantry that I'm going on strike and I won't go into the pantry anymore <laughs> because there's stuff on the floor and, you know, just I can't find things. And I think that the C for control is the hardest thing for me. Is that normal? Yes, I think most people find that. Yes, um, putting the system in place is not that, that hard for a lot of people, um, but yes, maintaining it is a challenge. And I have a few thoughts on that. Okay. Um, I feel that it's, it's a constant process and to maintain it a little bit every day or at least on a regular basis is key. Um, and it might even mean actually physically scheduling it on a calendar, like once- Hail. <laughs> order I know like really who's gonna do that right but <laughs> if, if we you're don't right. you're right it, I know you're right I mean I don't <laughs> you know um but you know certain things like maybe not uh, a, a kitchen pantry or whatever because we're constantly in and out so if it's possible to stay mindful and present about like oh I, I see this is out of order and like the corn is over there with the beans and right. you know so on a daily basis or a regular basis, just kind of modify it, uh, equalize, I think is a, a good word. Um, I know Julie Morgenstern is a famous organizer and she uses that word. Um, uh, I had, yeah, mindful being present, following through. Following through is sometimes a little bit of a challenge. Um, sometimes getting support. You know, if someone has a brain-based challenge, they might be able to get from steps one to four, but never in a million years will they get to step five without some kind of what I call a bridge. Right. So outside support might be that bridge, um, an accountability buddy, okay. just to say, hey, did you do it? Whatever right. it is. <laughs> right. 
Do you um, recommend involving the family during this time and cleaning out the pantry? I do. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's free and cheap labor right now. <laughs> yes, it is. And I also find that if the family is invested and they, you get buy-in, then they might be a little bit more agreeable to helping along the way. Um, and we know, you know, if you are, you are a business owner and you have to spend a lot of time on growing your business, they, you know, I, I did this with my own family, I, so I'm speaking from my experience. Mm -hmm. They need to support us. Right. We just can't do it all. You know, right. We might be able to give them direction and teach them how to do it, and then they need to step up as well. Okay. So now is your son in control of the kitchen? Well, we're kind of staying clear of the kitchen so that he can use it. <laughs> okay. All right. All He's right. a recipe tester and he needs okay. the space. <laughs> That's cool. So do you get to um, consume the things that he's testing? Is some, that a side benefit of, of his work? Yes, some <laughs> of it. Uh, I haven't really seen much of what he's been testing. Um, we have a, a unique situation in that our kitchen is kosher. Oh, and okay. He's testing on pots that the company he works for makes. Oh, gotcha. So if his products aren't kosher, if his um, end product isn't kosher, we can't eat it. <laughs> uh, I see, I see. Okay. I don't know what he's doing with it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a neighbor is getting, reaping some rewards from that. <laughs> totally fine. <laughs> totally fine. Supporting your neighbors is important right now. Oh yeah. Uh, you know, drop it on the doorstep and run. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I had to send a text to my neighbor the other day saying, do you have any rice? I think my rice went bad. And then, and then I found the date on the actual package of rice and it said it should be okay till June. And then I'm thinking, well, it's probably just in my head. It, the whole thing was just in my head. And so I texted her back on, never mind, because I didn't really, like, I was like, how are we even going to do that? I'll bring over a container or you can put in a bag. And I mean, just this whole, this whole world right now is um, a, a new reality. And hopefully, you know, it's not all a permanent shift. Um, but I think, I think we'll have some shifts in, in our, in our real life. Um, all right. So was that, did that kind of complete your, your instruction on, on what you would say would work for, for the pantry? Um, do you have any personal tips on how you stay motivated to finish something? Like say the pantry is going to take four hours to do. Like, do you have any personal advice or strategies that you use to help you see it through? That's a great question. And I have a few thoughts. Um, definitely one that you said earlier, because if everything is sitting out and that makes you uncomfortable and that makes one uncomfortable, that's great motivation to get it done beginning to end. Mm -hmm. um, I also suggest maybe, like you said, also setting a timer oh, okay. for 15 minutes and doing short spurts. Um, that's especially good for people with brain-based challenges. Um, because sometimes the attention um, isn't for a very long period of time. So the interest can be held for 15 minutes and the energy spurt uh, is, right. you know, it's, it's a great adrenaline rush. Um, how to stay motivated. Uh, I guess you could set up a, a virtual buddy. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> if you're both working on your pantry at the same time. That's a great idea. Um, I also, you know, I talk about core values, organizing to your core values. Mm -hmm. Like if, if you having things all over the place bug you, then maybe your core, one of your core values is you like things neat and clean and spacious and calming when there's nothing out on counters. Um, so if tapping into a, a core value um, and remembering what that is, um, is a good motivator, then I'm all for that. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I think that um, I, I love the having an accountability buddy around it just kind of helps, especially right now. I mean, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm finding myself that I would just as much prefer to go sit and read for a while and not that there's anything wrong with that, but um, it would be much easier for me to just say, Oh, I'll do the pantry later and go sit on the couch. 
um, oh, yeah. and do a Netflix binge. It would be just as easy for me. It would be very easy for me to decide to go do that in, in, <laughs> in my current reality. So I, I don't think I'm alone there, but no. um, so I think having, having, you know, that um, connection and, and another friend of mine, she had posted something on Facebook mentioning, um, let's not call it social distancing. Let's call it physical distancing, which yeah. is actually a much better term because we are very social people and there are other ways for us to connect socially um, without having to be, you know, in the same room. So, I so find- any excuse to get on a zoom call, <laughs> right? <laughs> for sure. For sure. <laughs> to keep us motivated. Um, so, so that kind of brings me to, I guess, what will be my last question, unless you have some other things that you want to add or talk about. I think we're doing beautifully. Okay. Um, you know, what personal strategies do you have right now to keep yourself positive? I mean, you're always smiling, Gail. <laughs> Which is what I love about you. Like, I can look at you across the room when we're in our, we're in a coaching program together and I look at you across the room and you are always smiling and, and you're just always a positive personality, which I love so much about you. Um, what is your personal secret to maintaining that? Well, honestly, lately it's been really challenging. <laughs> it's so easy to go down that rabbit hole of darkness. Mm. Um, but as you said, connecting with people right now is, it's definitely helping. It's keeping my vibration up. Um, I'm doing a lot of positive Mm -hmm. self-talk. Like this too shall pass. That's very helpful. And I'm going to send a shout out to James Taylor. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, he'll take it. (laughs) I, I love his song, Shower the People You Love with Love. And it's really, I keep, you know, playing it in my head. Like, it just reminds me, like, just keep letting people know that I love them. Connecting, it, it just really lifts me up. So hopefully I can lift other people up by sharing that message. Yeah, that's, that's really sweet. I'm going to go listen to that song. <laughs> it is so beautiful. <laughs> oh, good. I'm going to listen to that one. That'll be my next, that'll, when we hang up, that's what we'll do. Um, we did a zoom call last night with my husband's family and there were, I don't know, probably 12, 12 to 14 squares on the zoom. And, you know, some of them were, you know, two people were in it and like my family, all four of us were in it. Um, So we didn't each have our own square, which was probably better because, you know, once you get too many people on zoom with an open mic, it can go a little um, sideways. Um, but I was, I was so pleasantly surprised at how well it went and everybody kind of took their turn and kind of talked about, you know, what they'd been up to and, um, you know, we laughed and um, it was, it was really important to make that connection with family. And so I think we'll probably, probably do that on a fairly regular basis. So oh, what I recommend that as well. Um, so I guess I will end with saying that if anyone is looking for some additional support that they want some online support. Gail is more than willing to help you out and provide those services to you. She can walk you through an outline of of steps to take, I'm sure. Um, Or if you just need, um, or if you just need somebody to kind of hear you out and help you formulate a plan on, you know, maybe you have multiple projects in the house and you're just not really sure where to get started. Sometimes it, it's, you know, having that personal coach help you know how to get started is the first step. Um, so Gail, why don't you talk about contact information? Sure. And how they might reach out to you. My website is www.lgorganized.com or you can just give me a call 201-364-6833. All right. Can you say your number one more time? Yep. 201-364-6833. Okay. Awesome. Cause I, I felt like the internet went out just like it kind of went weird there just for a second. You bet. <laughs> That's always when it does. Like whenever I'm listening to a voicemail, <laughs> they get to the part with the phone number and it's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so you know, I figure we can repeat it and uh, then we're, we're safe. Um, so thank you so much, Gail. It was really lovely talking with you and yeah. you sharing some of your amazing tips on uh, 
being at home with our pantry. Indeed. We've all got yeah. some uh, grocery shopping and meal planning to do. I highly recommend meal planning ahead of time before you go. So anyways, okay. thank you so much, Gail. Really thank you it. for having me. Always right. a pleasure. All right.